Hey guys, this is Dimitri from Mew H Studio, and thank you for joining me again. In this video, we're gonna look at refining the previous mask that we created by looking at the skin and using the tissue add-on to create a nice panelization option. If you'd like to support this channel, please feel free to download the model from the links below. So the first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate my initial facade. So Shift D escape to leave it in the same place. I'm gonna turn off the floors for now and let's go to just solid view. So that's what we ended up with last time. First thing I wanna mention is thank you all guys for the comments from the previous video in terms of figuring out these funny seams over here. So let's go and fix them in the screw modifier by enabling calc order. So now it looks much better. The next thing I wanna do is remove the wireframe modifier cause this was a quick sort of preview of what we think the geometry may look like but now we're gonna give him proper panels. So I wanna go now in the solid view and see the levels of subdivision that we have. I'm gonna turn off optimal display so we can see all the elements. And let's turn on the floors once again, just so we see how big a panel is in relationship to the floor. And as you can see, it's actually pretty big. What we wanna do is change the number of subdivisions. Let's see if we do something like this. Yeah, so that's getting a little bit better. I'm, I'm a little bit more comfortable with that level of subdivisions. The next thing we want to do is bake that geometry. So I'm going to duplicate it again, Shift D, turn off the previous one, and we want to apply all the modifiers. Now, if you don't know this yet, if you go to your preferences and you look for in add-ons for modifiers, you can enable modifier tools and it gives us these four icons here which are very useful for applying all the modifiers all at the same time. So now I'm just going to press apply all to our copy of course in case we want to go back to do something else. Turn off everything else. Okay so now we have our base mesh. Now I do want to do a few things here like we don't want to have panels that shrink along the edges. So what we can do is if I go into edit mode select edges and Let's see. So we've got one that's nice here, one that's tight here. So we can get rid of this edge and shift alt click this edge. In fact, let me enable my shortcuts. All right, then now if I press X and edge loops, and I'm gonna do that for all the sides. So if I go around here, alt, Click, click, X, edge loops. This way we preserve a slightly smoother mesh with the panels being all more relative in terms of their actual sizes. Yeah, so that's the one trouble with using subdiv for architecture geometry. We always need to go back and post process it a little bit because of the what nature that subdivision works around tight edges where edge loops get much tighter and there's various ways to redo it this is one way where we go back and literally edit our geometry another way is working with the floors maybe i'll do that in another video where we usually take it into grasshopper for example and work with the floors and the subdivisions we subdivide the floors into something nice like one meter or half a meter segment and we let that go all the way up to the next floor level xg it's more sides in this building than I thought there were. Let's see, did we get them all? Yep, okay, cool. All right, so these are our panels now. So what we need to do is create a nice panel that can tessellate. So I'm gonna exit out, go to top view, and let's go to Shift A, Mesh Plane. Move it somewhere on the side. I'm missing my grid floors. Don't know where they've gone. Strange. It must be that. Okay, so that's our panel size and two by two meters is fine as a, as a starting point. So let's go in edit mode. This is gonna be a really simple panel. It's gonna basically be a square frame with glazing inside. So in edit mode, I for inset and let's go to something along, let's try point one. That's fine. Next, right click and split so what we just did is split this face from the rest of the face so this face has its own independent vertices let's take a look 
So if I drag this vertex, you see it's independent from the vertex of the face that's inside. I found out that that works a little bit better when we create these sorts of panels, uh, so we have better control of the overall geometry. So I'm going to create some very simple materials here. Let's call one frame. In fact, let's call this frame one. Create a new material called frame two. And create another material called glazing. Glazing. And I like to give them initially very simple different colors in the viewport display before we even go to customizing the actual settings of the material. This way we can easily recognize which material is which. So now if I go into solid view, we can see everything is the color of the first layer. So we have frame one. I'm going to leave that as is. Let's go to the second element here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I for inset and we're going to do something much smaller here. So let's go with 0 0.04 as an example. Right click split and we're going to give this glazing material i'm going to select everything that's linked to the previous selection so if i hold over over now i'm on face mode so anywhere on the face and press l we select all those elements that are linked let's assign this okay so materials are done let's now just extrude these elements so l e we will, we will want to make this a little bit thicker so let's go with point one and then shift data to select everything. And let's select this element now. Extrude. And let's go with 0 0.03. And we don't even we don't even need to worry about the glass. Now we can move these a little bit better so they're more central. You can be as exact or as unexact as you wish in here. And what I also like to do is get rid of the unnecessary faces. In this case, I'm gonna select this edge loop. X faces because what's going to happen is that these panels are going to join all the other panels. And I want to do the same with the green. You see here we have an overlapping edge which is not needed. So let's go to this mode. And that's the wrong selection. That's it. It's, it's going to be a little bit tricky to select this. Let's try now. There you go. I just clicked twice until we got to the right one. X, F to hide the faces. All right, let's go back into solid mode. So our panel is pretty much done. The only other thing that it's important to do is make sure that the face orientation is in the correct way. So blue is outside, red is inside. So we're good in that department as well. So I'm going to turn off the face orientation. All right, so I'm going to call this F2. Let's call it panel. Panel 1. And now we can go and play a little bit with the materials. It's going to be nice and simple. Uh, I have my ground. I'm just going to disable for a second. So let's start with the glazing. So I'm not even going to go in the notes. So when you have a simple material, we get the principled BSDF, which you can see in here. We can do more complicated notes, but in this case, the material editor is fine. So let's make roughness zero specular one because it's going to be glass I always like to reduce the alpha a little bit and make the color a little bit darker and maybe give it a little bit of transmission as well all right let's go to frame one so that's going to be our large metal panel so let's make metallic one maybe a little bit brighter and let's give it a slight hue. Let's make a slightly bluish hue. Very subtle. And now let's go to frame two. Make it metallic again. Maybe we can make it a little bit rougher. And change that to a slightly beige hue. Again, it should be very subtle. Let's see what that looks like. And we can change this later and adjust them as we see fit. So the one thing I forgot to do about the glazing is if we go in viewport display settings, blend mode, let's change that to alpha blend and shadow mode, none. 
Okay, now it should be transparent. All right, so we have our panel and we have our tower, which I guess it looks kind of glassy at the moment. Kind of cool, I must say. All right, let's go to solid mode so we don't get confused. So, make sure you enable tissue. If you don't have it enabled, go to edit preferences, search for tissue and click. I have two versions. One is the one that comes with the software, 0325, and the other one is the one directly from GitHub. And you can see it's a few versions past the one that it actually comes with Blender. This is 2.83.1, by the way. Okay, so first I select the panel, then shift click to select our base mesh, go to tissue and select tessellate. So then just make sure that the base is the right base and the component is the right component. And then let's press OK. So now we have a tessellation and this tessellation is parametric in the sense that it preserves all the relationship to both the base, which is facade 002, and to the panel, which is panel 1. So if we change the tessellation in facade 002 or panel, we'll see all the previews. So that's what it looks like at the moment. And let's turn on the floors and let's go to preview mode. Now I'm realizing I need to redo the floors because something slightly changed in the shape, which is fine. So if we go to the floors, modifiers, and it needs to intersect now with facade.002. So now it's the correct tessellation. Cool. So now we have a much, much better, cleaner, more realistic facade. It's all in a DAG grid. That's a personal choice. You can go and change your mesh a little bit or change your panel to do that. And I just want to show you what would happen if we give this a slight directionality. So let's go back to the panel. I'm going to go to top view and let's select vertices. Enable X-ray mode, and I'm going to select all of these elements here. And let's give it a slight directionality. Now, if we go back here, we don't see the preview yet, the updated preview. But if I click on the mesh, the tessellation mesh, press refresh, and now we see it. Now you see that the rotation is a bit random. Some panels are rotating in one direction, some in the other. We can fix that if we want to. So if you go in the object data tab of the tessellation, enable or expand tessellate settings. And if we scroll down, there's a sub tab called rotation. So this is the default rotation. Let's try active UV. Although I don't think I have any UV, so it clearly doesn't do anything. We can try a weight gradient which again, I don't have any weight, so that's not going to really do much at the moment. And we can have random, so it's completely randomized, which could be a nice effect. You know, some are going in one direction, some panels are going in one direction, some panels are going in the other direction. So I'm actually going to leave it as this. And what I want to do now is just play a little bit more with the material. So I'm going to select the panel and let's go to the material tab. Let's make our frame one darker. So I always like to have this contrast between the dark and the light frame. So maybe the big one is quite dark. And the secondary frame, you know, it's also a little bit light darker. Or maybe it's much darker. Not sure. What do you guys think looks better? It's up to personal opinion, I guess, I imagine. All right, so now I'm just going to enable the ground. And I, ha I am aware I have some fun intersections here, but if we disable the view selected, you see what we get. Thank you for watching. And if you have any recommendations for any kinds of videos or towers, something parametric related to architecture, concept design, please let me know. And again, the model is available for download for those of you that wish to support this channel to enable me to further do these kinds of videos. Thanks again, guys, and see you next time.